Hello, my name is Charlotte de Vraturen and I work for IG Delft. In this section, I would like to explore the link between food security and water productivity. So what is the link? Some say that improving water productivity is essential for food security and that without increasing water productivity, food security goals will not uh, be achieved. So in this section, I would like to explore how water productivity and food security are linked. But first, let's turn to the term food security. What is food security? According to the generally accepted definition as formulated by FAO in uh, 1996, food security is achieved when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences. This is quite a mouthful, so let's break it up. There are three uh, important elements in, the, in this definition. Physical access, economic access and nutritious food. Let's first look at the first element, the physical access. This is linked to food production. You first need to produce food to be able to access it physically. And also you need the infrastructure to transport food to where it is needed. A second element is the economic access. This points to the fact that you need the economic means to access food. So you need money to buy food. So you need an income to be able to access food. The third element, nutritious food, points to the need for a varied diet, like uh, vegetables, tubers, cereals, livestock products, and the like. All three elements are linked to water in a different way. Let's look first at the link between water and food production. In quantities, it takes an enormous amount of water to produce food. This slide shows the so-called water footprint of different uh, food products. For example, a tomato takes about 13 liters uh, to produce, or a one potato takes about 25 liters. So that means that potato crops uh, evaporate on average some 25 liters of water to produce one potato. A beefsteak takes about 7,000 liters. So uh, from the cow to a, a beefsteak, it, the, some 7,000 liters of water are evaporated, primarily because of the uh, crops uh, to feed the cattle. It, there's an enormous variety of uh, water requirements uh, of the different food uh, products. But let's look at a, the global average. Do you know how much water it takes uh, for crops to evaporate to produce our food in liters per person per day as a global average? Is that around 500 liters per person per day? Is it 1000 liters per person per day? 3000 liters? Or is it even 5500? liters per person per day. The correct answer is 3000 liters on a global average and as a rough estimate, of course. But compare that with the amount of water that we need for drinking. That's about two to five liters per person per day, just drinking. For domestic use, that's around 50 to 500 liters per person per day. And fruit production is an order of magnitude larger, between 2,500 and 500 liters per person per day. In total, uh, food crops uh, evaporate some 7,300 cubic kilometers of water per year 
to produce our food. So that is a 7 and 15 zeros of liters of water uh, evaporated by food crops every year. That translates to about 3,000 liters per person per day. Uh, there is a big difference in what people eat. Uh, for example, a, a vegetarian diet takes an estimated 2,500 liters per person per day, while a purely meat-based diet takes uh, about double of that, uh, 5,000 liters per person per day. Now, most of it comes, of course, from the rain, falls directly uh, on the land where the food crops are produced. A, some 18% of the global uh, cultivated area is irrigated, but that produces 40% of uh, global food production. So let's turn to the second element, the access to food and the link between water and access to food. Field studies in Ghana and Burkina Faso, and these are the photographs here on the slides, show that small farmers with access to irrigation water derive a cash income from irrigated vegetables for the local market. The additional incomes are often modest, uh, just a few hundred dollars per season because the landholders are small, small. However, the additional cash plays a crucial role for rural households during the dry season when other sources of agriculture income are scarce. So there is a positive correlation between access to agriculture water, food production, poverty reduction and nutritional status. So, can you list three mechanisms why irrigation leads to higher incomes? Access to irrigation uh, raises income because it leads to higher production, uh, but also to higher productivity. It leads to less fluctuation in production, a more stable production. Hence, less risk for farmers, and uh, that uh, leads to uh, that farmers are generally more inclined to use uh, better inputs. Access to irrigation water also leads to crop diversification and the cultivation of higher value crops. But it also, irrigation water is also used for multiple uses, like fish and livestock and, and other. Also, it leads to better nutrition because of a, the availability of a larger variety of food crops. Also, there are two indirect effects. Uh, it leads to more employment on farm, so more possibilities uh, to earn a, an income for farm workers. But also that means that quite often leads to more employment off farm. Uh, because uh, farm workers are attracted to the area, um, that leads maybe to demand of, for housing, for restaurants, shops, uh, but also for transportation uh, services, etc. So this is quite often called the multiplier effect, which could be quite strong. Therefore, there is a positive correlation between access to agriculture water, production, poverty reduction and nutritional status. Cash crops, livestock, fish uh, uh, for local markets provide income to buy better food. And also part of the production by farmers is also used for own consumption. Lastly, let look at, let's look at the uh, link between water and nutrition. Richer diets take more water to produce, uh, mainly because of the livestock products, meat and milk, which we already saw earlier. Also, fruits and vegetables are often cultivated under irrigation and hence uh, requires water. As we have seen in the slide before, uh, access to water also generates income to buy better food, hence better nutrition.
In conclusion, water and food security are link linked in many direct and indirect ways. But we started this section with the question, what is the link between water productivity and food security? Will uh, a higher water productivity lead to improvement of food security? Well, not necessarily, not always. Food security is enhanced if improved water productivity leads to higher and more stable production, if improved water productivity leads to crop diversification and higher income, and if improved water productivity leads to water savings that can be reallocated so that more people get access to water for productive use.